we've done a couple of things to prepare for this particular step because we're getting ready to, to build our shear clamp. All right, so for those of you who haven't been in boat building for the last 20, 30 years, a shear clamp is essentially a piece of wood, normally planking, that would go at the shear of the boat, which your first plank would go up and clamp to, and then glue to, or you know, whatever those particular plants called for. Now, you know, I've been doing kayaks for a lot, a lot, a lot of years, and um, in the early years, it was about making two halves, stick them together and taping them and gluing them together with fiberglass tape and all that. And I am so completely done with doing that because my arms aren't that long and my body's big and it's hard for me to get up into those holes and do that and do that neatly. So a number of years ago, I devised a different method that I like to use. Uh, it's been very successful. Uh, by using shear clamps, which is age-old. I didn't invent this. This has been around for a couple of hundred years. Uh, all I did was adapt it to a kayak because it worked fine. All right. so what we're going to do is, is we're going to build this clamp because the boat is small and actually taking a plank and bending it around or a piece of uh, uh, timber like ash would be really, really difficult. Even something soft like cedar, three quarter by three quarter would be difficult, right? And that's what we need. We need a three quarter inch by three quarter inch piece of wood. So, the best way I've found to do that is to laminate it up and glue it up the same way we do the stems, only a little bit simpler because it's cedar and a little bit harder because it's on the forms itself. Now, some of you may be thinking that I took the easy way out in the DVD and showed you how to build a tiny boat. And in fact, you could not be further from the truth. I specifically chose this boat to do this portion of the DVD because it will be the most difficult to do, right? Uh, the, the toughest part of stripping, whether it's a canoe or a kayak or a whitehall or some other kind of boat, the toughest part of stripping is coming from the widest part of the boat down into the narrowest part of the boat. And the quicker that happens, the more difficult it is to get the strips to actually conform to what you need to conform them to. All right, think about it. This is an eight foot boat. Uh, I've got a 16-foot kayak over there. The 16-foot kayak is only three or four inches wider than the 8-foot kayak, right? So, but it's, it's half, right? So if, if, if I got a 30-inch wide 16-foot kayak and this was going to be the same type of curves to it, I'd have to have a 15-inch wide kayak. Um, it would be pretty, but not too many people would actually be able to get in and paddle it, right? So this kayak is only a couple of uh, three inches narrower. Um, uh, but I still need to get to that point, which is considerably closer than it is on a larger boat, right? So what that means is I got to go from wide down in the narrow really quickly, and then I have to turn it as I go up. So we have all these compound curves happening. So the moral of the story is, as you watch me strip this boat, I'm going to show you every trick I know to get there, right? Because I'm going to have to because of the curves of this boat. So the, the bigger and the wider your boat gets, probably the simpler it's going to get. So we chose this boat, not because it was simple, but because I think it's going to show you every trick we need to show you. And that next trip is to get the shear clamp done. So all I've done here is these particular strips, um, when I designed into the plans, I have these notches here, which you're probably wondering why you cut it out. This is why you cut it out, because we're going to have our shear clamp in there. And it's three quarters of an inch deep, and it varies how far down it goes, depending <coughs> excuse me, on which form you're at. And then I put a screw in. Now this screw is not on the same side of every form, and that's by design. The screw always goes closest to whichever end it's at, right? So this screw here is on this side, and this side, and this side. And as I get down here to this side of the boat, the screw starts to go on the other side of the boat. And what that does is as I finger clamp it down, I'm not bulging the strip out, right? Because I still haven't beveled these yet, and I'm not going to do that until after all this is glued up and nice. The other thing we've done is we put blue painter's tape down, and that goes all the way down around that notch, because we're going to put this together using epoxy, and the last thing in the world we want this to do is glue to our forms, right? So we've got painter's tape all the way nice and around there. Okay, um, uh, these things, we're going to do a fine cut of them later. But, you know, you just have it so that when they go out to the ends that they don't get in each other's way. And you can see that it stops right here so I can have some come the other way and, it, and there won't be anything getting in its way. Uh, and now I'm just going to take them apart and start gluing them. Right, so make sure you dry fit them the way I did first and then mark them where they're going to go back on there. So once the epoxy's on there, it's a lot easier if you know where everything's going to happen. 
All right, I'm gonna mix up some epoxy with a little bit of wood flour. We're gonna start gluing these up and getting them clamped into place. Now, I'm gonna work while I talk to you here um, because epoxy has a limited shelf life. And I know from experience that when it comes to these projects, from talking to thousands of you at this point, that the thing that scares most of you the most in this project is working with epoxy and fiberglass. And it shouldn't. Now, <clears throat> I'm not gonna take any one part of this DVD and have an epoxy class with you. I'm gonna do it throughout the entire DVD. Because as I use it, as we're building this boat and putting on the stems and gluing them up and putting cloth on and all kinds of things, we'll be using epoxy up over and over and over again, and it's the same epoxy. <clears throat> Excuse me. You just use it a little bit differently and you may mix it with something a little bit differently and you may mix it with more or less of that something. So what I'm doing right now is pretty much what's called a light glue job. And that means I'm using a soft wood, which is very porous. And I'm going to glue pieces together using the epoxy. Now, because wood isn't a perfectly flat surface, I'm going to use a filler. And the filler that we use here and that we send out in our kits and all is a very finely sifted wood flour. And when I mix that together with the epoxy, it gives me a really good glue. And depending on what it is I'm trying to glue, I will use different amounts. So for something like this, where I'm doing just a really light glue job on very porous wood, I use just a little bit. And you can see that my consistency here is really, really runny. Right, kind of like uh, maple syrup kind of thing. And I'm just going to go down and paint that on. Now, all epoxies are different. And because of that, we can only support, really, with any real-time knowledge, what it is we use here in the shop and that we sell to our customers. And we understand that people like to get stuff maybe locally or from somebody else, make sure that when you do that, that whoever it is you're dealing with knows what they're talking about and can support you. Because if something goes wrong, using epoxy is the last place that you want it to have go wrong. And over the years, we've seen some really, really crazy things happen. Uh, we had one customer that got basically recommendations from his local body shop. Well, that's fine, but body shops don't use the same kind of epoxy that we use in boat building. Matter of fact, he didn't use epoxy at all. He used a polyester resin. Polyester resins are absolutely fantastic for making fiberglass boats. However, polyester resin isn't a glue, and it doesn't glue very well to wood. And in less than two years, his boat was completely delaminating on him. And it took us a while trying to help them out to get to the bottom of what exactly was going on. So the moral of that story is just make sure whoever it is you're talking to knows what they're talking about. There are a lot of good epoxies on the market. We test about every three years here and evaluate and decide what we're going to use. Remember that we're a working boat shop and we're constantly building here. And so we want to make sure that we're using the product that's right for us. And over the years, we've changed Oh, three times off the top of my head that I can think of. And we changed for reasons, because there were advances in formulations, and uh, we wanted to stay up with those advancements. Uh, and some of those advancements over the, year, uh, over the years have made difference in viscosity, whether or not it blushed. Uh, one epoxy we just stopped using just because it just smelled so bad. And um, we didn't want, sometimes we got kids running around here and we just didn't want that around here, all right? So there's a reason for everything and just make sure that whatever you use, whoever you're talking to um, knows what they're talking about. Okay. So I am just going to finish painting up this side and effectively all you need to know here is that every side that's in contact with another piece of wood 
other than the forms needs to have epoxy on it. So when I am done doing this one, I'm gonna flip it over onto the last one that I just painted and then paint the other side. the uh, glue on all sides of this now and I marked it before I took it down so I know exactly where it's going back I won't lie to you this is definitely easier with an extra set of hands but I figured I had to show you that it can be done with one set now assuming that you cut the notches out of your forms right you gotta make sure you tuck them up there nice and tight. And make sure that the strips are all aligned with each other. All right, now that I've got this dry fitted on here, oh, actually wet fitted on here, now I'm gonna go back with a bunch of spring clamps and I'm gonna fill in between. But before I do that, I'm going to get some of this ooze, some of this extra epoxy out of here. You're going to hear me say a lot of these things about epoxy over and over and over again. And that's just hopefully so I can save you some pain. It is always easier to clean epoxy up before it dries than it is to sand it up after it dries. All right, so use gloves. Um, keep it off your skin if at all possible. And always clean up when you're done. All right, I'm just going to finish clamping this up. We're going to get to the other side and we're just going to leave this boat alone and let that dry overnight. Okay, so I was just thinking for those brave souls who are going to follow along without watching the whole DVD first, that there's a couple of things I definitely should tell you about epoxy. Um, again, it's just a glue. Whether you're gluing fiberglass on the boat or whether you're gluing pieces of wood together, it's just a glue. But it's nothing like yellow glue. You're gonna see here, all I have is simple little spring clamps on there. Epoxy, the opposite of yellow glue, does not like to be clamped really, really hot. The last thing in the world you want to do is ooze or squeeze all of your epoxy out of the joint. Where in a yellow glue, you want to really, really clamp the heck out of it, right? So just slight tension, firmly together, the epoxy will do the rest. It'll penetrate the wood and it'll be very, very strong. Also, you're gonna see throughout the DVD, I am not dressing for success. I am dressing like I'm working on a boat. Epoxy is incredibly unforgiving when it comes to things like clothes. If you get epoxy on, a, on, on, on clothes, it, it's done. You know? You're gonna have to throw it away because what it'll do is it'll harden so much that it'll basically make a hole. Uh, when you touch it, it'd be brittle and it'll make a hole in your clothes. So if you're coming home from work and you're thinking, boy, I can just get this little piece done if I just jump right into the garage or the basement or wherever it is, don't do it. <laughs> Run in, change, and then go ahead and work on your boat. And um, hopefully I just saved you some money on clothes. Okay, I think that's all I need to tell you right now. Again, clean up, clean up, clean up. And I'm gonna do the other side. And uh, then we're just gonna leave her beef at night.